So a friend of mine gave me this tank, and what I think I'm going to do with it is make a, a sandblasting rig out of it. I got those screw compressors running, so I thought, well, if I got a screw compressor, I might as well make a sandblaster. I don't really know what this thing was or where it came from, but I know it's got a bladder inside of here, and it's pre-charged to 12 PSI, so I don't quite know what that is, but apparently it's got a bladder in here some kind of way, so we're going to take it all apart and uh, let the air out of it and find out what's going on with this thing, if we can use it and make a sandblasting pot out of it. I think it'll be handy around here. So we'll get... I've never quite seen anything like this. I don't know how far down in there that looks like an inner tube. How far down in there it goes, I don't know. that big. Wow. So this is what that thing looked like. It had a, a hose going all the way down the bottom of that rubber bag. It's got all these little holes in here. I don't really know what that thing was for, but Something else. Plenty good, bud. Gotta make that sand roll out of there. Oh yeah. Plenty. So this is an old plastic pallet that I found down in my junk pile down there and an old steel quarter inch thick grate. And the only reason I did this is because I want to help support the weight of this sandblasting tank sitting on top of it. So it's I can stuff it in the back of a pickup truck or something. I don't have to worry about it falling over. So I drilled and, and uh, bolted it down to that plastic pallet. And then what I'll do when I get my tank built, I'm going to set my tank in the middle of that. So my tank, I've been working on it today. And I put in my sand valve. So the way this is going to work here is I'm going to have a either an air cylinder or a lever up here that pushes and pulls on this. That's going to that's the sand and no sand. And the farther you push it, the more sand you get. This will be my 
sweeping air coming through here and then this will be going to my gun so you remember the lid that we turned on the lathe to open this up so it would make it easier to pour the sand in so we're going to take this real heavy gasket paper to fit this with the ball peen and then uh, on the other side this will be our where we pour our sand in and then we're just going to put a cap on that once we get that all done we'll put a cap on that cap it off so I bought an 80 gallon a minute hydraulic filter that's 10 micron so I'm thinking that it's going to dry my air for me or at least it's going to settle out and condensate in the bottom of that I've got all my Chicago fittings. I put me some safety cables on here just in case something was to break so the hose don't beat you to death. I put an air pressure regulator on here for my breathing air that's going to go up into my helmet and fill my helmet up. I put another uh, water separator slash filter on here so that it's getting filtered twice before it goes to my hood. This valve turns on my direct flow coming out of the end of my nozzle and I put a gauge up on the top I got it marked at 115 pounds I ran it up a while ago to 150 not standing next to it just to make sure that it was a good solid tank I set my pressure regulator at 100 pounds so if it ever gets more than 100 pounds this opens up I still got a few safety cables to put on yet this is my pedal assembly so as soon as my air comes from my compressor to here so as soon as I step on this it starts filling my tank and I'm going to keep that close to me and also my sand valve and my line valve that keeps my line pressure running so I ran my clean my hood air up here next to my gun so a ceramic tip gun and this will be my breathing air here it goes in and fills up my helmet I just run it and it does fine I need to go find some uh, I need to go find some material whether it be sand or black beauty or whatever I can find and I need a couple of more whip check hoses so that if it was to blow a hose that it's not gonna send a hose chasing you someplace that's never good but it's I just bought a helmet from uh, Harbor Freight for like 25 bucks and I bought a set of blast cabinet gloves for 28 bucks and I got some old coveralls around here now I need to build me a little room or something to do this in but I've got my discharge sand hose sand and air mixed it's safety tied my clean air hose goes with it when I get out here to the end what I did was I put on a shield a hydraulic hose shield so if anything was to ever happen to this hose when you're standing there that it'll it if it ruptures a hose or ruptures anything that it's going to go inside that shield and not come out and get you it's also safety tied onto the end of the nozzle that's my breathing air that I'm going to have another 3 8 filter before it goes into my helmet at the end of that hose this is my compressor hose that's going to go to my compressor this is my charge pedal so I will push down on this and that'll start charging everything up if you're sitting here sandblasting something and you want to stop you get off the pedal you walk over here and you shut off your sand and it'll take just a little bit for that pressure to cease this is my little room here that I built out of uh, heavy plastic and I've got a 3 8 belting floor so I'm going to try to collect all my sand and and clean it and run it back through again it's twelve dollars and fifty cents or twelve ninety nine a bag for fifty pound bag so I want to try to reclaim it a little bit I've got my compressor sitting over here so I'll run my air hose over to my compressor I've also got a safety tie on it to tie the hose to it so if anything ever happens all these connections are tied and hopefully nothing ever happens but always try to be a little bit on the safe side so that nothing ever uh, 
3/8 thick metal here. It's got paint on it. We're going to sandblast that off. We just put 50 pound bag of sand in it, Black Beauty sand. Got a new pair of rubber gloves and a helmet, and I got on a real heavy coat. We got our compressor sitting over there. We've got the regulator on it set at 90 pounds. We've already pressure tested this thing to 150 and we're probably going to run 70, 80, maybe 90, not much more than that. I don't want to run much more than that. So we'll get her fired up here and we'll see how she's going to do. There you have it. That paint's awful thick. But I'll tell you, for what we do for prepping metal to be welded and things like that, I think it's going to work real well. It's about 85 out here right now, and I'll tell you what, if, uh, if you had to stay in that suit for an hour or two, you'd want an air conditioner in there. That gets pretty hot. But I think it'll work out great for prepping metal to be welded things like that, especially on a rim, stuff like that. We do a lot of welding around here. So, always remember, safety first. Pressure test your tank, even an air compressor. You know, uh, you need to make sure that that tank's not bad. You start putting pressure on it and you're standing there next to it, that's not a good thing. So, be safe out there. Thanks for watching.